Dear bloggers, in this video, we're gonna learn how to install a header ad onto your WordPress blogs, how to insert an advertisement onto your blog, how to set up a Google ad in your headers, or anywhere on your blog, we're just gonna focus on the headers here. Whatever you want to call it, we're gonna do it. I'm Greg, welcome back to the channel if you haven't been here in a while, and let's take a look at the setup today. So here we are on our blog. We can see we have this header from Google AdSense, which is picking up Divi theme. It looks a little bit wonky on the homepage, and that's because our homepage is a little wider than our blog posts. So ideally, you're getting most of your traffic onto a few well-written, well seo blog posts. This is where we want the ad to look good. But I'll, of course, give you strategies to make the ad wider or taller and customize it to the location on your blog site. So the setup behind the scenes is gonna be in appearance, theme file editor, and we're gonna be in, of course, the header. If you can't find your header, you can just look for header.php or do command find for header. And as usual, we're using Google Chrome. Sorry about that mouse moving, by the way. I still have to get the uh, Air mouse set up. So here we are in header. And what we're going to do basically in this tutorial, and we're going to do it from scratch on a different site, it's only going to take about 10 minutes by the way, is set up the logo, which is the site branding, inside of some code we're going to write. So we've written this code here. This is from the theme. Didn't write this myself, didn't write this myself. But we're basically going to wrap your existing logo in some really easy HTML and CSS. And then we're gonna float this advertisement here. We can see the ad is right here. All of this code in between the script tags. And there's customizable width and height here. And then you're gonna just end it with a clear fix. So basically if I go ahead and make the ad taller here and save, then the ad will appear taller. And it might not fill the space, it might. In this case, the Divi ad is smart, it's a responsive ad. But in some cases, the ad will just fill like a set space because the ad Google serves up is a smaller, non-responsive ad. Most of the times it'll be responsive though. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that right now, guys. I think you're gonna love it. This is obviously how to set up a Google ad, but you could put any sort of image, like one of these blog post images, which you make into a custom ad using PicMonkey or Microsoft Word or Wherever you create your images, you could also set up an image you make inside of these divs so that that is just a static image which has some text or graphics on it and is a custom ad that you make as well. Great, so let's get into it. And before we do, I'll let you know if you'd like to have myself or someone from our team set up this ad for you, then you can just go ahead and head to dearblogger.com, click on the button that says something like, we'll do it for you, where we'll even make your entire website. Please also make sure to subscribe, like the video with the button below so that people around the world can get this content too if you found it useful. And let's jump in. And that's Joey, our puppy outside. So first off guys, let's go to AdSense. To get an AdSense site live, you just need to have a WordPress blog, make sure it's self-hosted because they're smart, they know that now, and have three blog posts up. That's what I recommend so you have some content that relates to your niche. You're not just a robot site or created by ChatGPT or something like that. Once you're on your homepage here, you can see that we're not making a ton of money. It's more just for tutorial purposes. We do more of the affiliate marketing stuff. And you can see we're in by site and I wanna click on by ad unit. Now we have a list of all the ads we've made and some have fallen off over time, but it does a pretty good job of tracking those old ads from eight years ago too. So we can go ahead and create the new ad unit and we're gonna want a display ad, right? So this is what you almost always want, it's recommended. We're not doing things in a feed like FeedBurner or in article ads because we don't really serve to tablets or Kindles or stuff like that. And I'm not sure what these other two are. So we're gonna do the display ad and I've already set one up right here, but in your case, you would just click add new. Name it up here as such, and then you're gonna choose the horizontal ad. So you're already in a horizontal window. Now this part is a bit of a debate. I like choosing the fixed ad because it gives us the custom width and height, but you might be able to go with responsive if your theme can accommodate the responsive ad and 
push it into the right space. My theme cannot, so I need fix so I can manually tell WordPress how big the ad should be. And we're gonna click create. Okay, so here's our code. And we want HTML, not AMP right now. With our handy Google AdSense code created, you can highlight it and right click copy or just hit copy code snippet. And let's head back to your WordPress blog. So now we're gonna paste the code in and if you want, you can just go ahead and make some space wherever you're working and go ahead and paste it in. So until you save, nothing really changes. And you know, this space is actually meant to be worked on. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in. There's the code. Okay, cool. Now let's see what everything means here. So what you want guys is to have your site branding or your logo or whatever code that your logo is designed by floating to the left and you want your ad floating to the right. Pretty standard format. All right guys, now that we have a little space to work, you're gonna to need to find the code that tells you where your logo is. It's gonna be something like site branding or header, header logo, maybe you can just hit command find for the word logo. But this will probably be the hardest part of the tutorial is finding exactly which HTML your theme developer wrote that shows the logo that you've inserted probably through the customized settings. Let's say we were instead on our elementary website here at startawordpresswebsite.com and we wanted to find that logo code here. Well, we've helped a lot of you use Elementor and Aster and Ocean WP, so this might be a good place to start. On this separate website, let's head to Appearance Theme File Editor. I understand, and let's open up the header file, which is called Theme Header within Astra. And we can see, like on our Dear Blogger site, we wanna be in the space just below the head area that you're gonna to wanna to be inside this header area right here, and here we have PHP WP head, which will dictate where your logo goes. So if I wrote something like, hey, some text by the logo, and updated it and then checked out the site, you'd see that, hey, there's some text up here by the logo. And that's a good place to start putting things in, like your logo and your ad. We obviously don't need this text but just a good way for you to do a little trial and error and figure out where you're working on your site when you're in the code files. So I'm gonna walk you through what we made here and that way you can know how to implement it on your own sites. Basically, once you find your logo code, you're gonna go ahead and write out first a div style, which is the width of the entire amount of content you wanna cover. This is gonna be the width of the entire header. So in my case, I'm allotting for the space from here all the way over to the right side over here. And I'm going ahead and guessing that that's 900 pixels. So we write out div style equals width. Next up, we need to write a div style for the left portion that's floating on our website and give it a little margin. So we, so we can see div style equals max width, 400 pix, which is a 400 pixel chunk on the left side. And it's got a left float and a margin to the right, which spaces the logo from the advertisement. Done and done. Next up, guys, you want your actual logo code, which you just copy from your theme. And then you've got to close that with a div. This will separate the logo into this one separate div space. And you can start making the space now for your ad. So we're gonna do div style equals another 400, but this one is floating to the right. Within the right area is your ad code. This is the fun part of having the Google AdSense code right here. And as you can see, we've customized the width and the height of it. So in ours, we knew it was 500 by width and about 110 height that works, but you know, you have to do a little bit of trial and error with those numbers and make them like five or 10 more or less to fit it into your site. And of course the Google AdSense code is closed off by a div. Lastly, at the bottom, you just need a clear fix, which will make sure that things coming after this floated area don't float off into the middle of nowhere or Narnia, and they just file in order right beneath the header content that we've created. So the clear fix closes off the area perfectly and lets WordPress know that the floating is done for now. All right, guys, and that is how it's designed. I'm gonna want our original ad code here to stay on the site and not use our new code because the new code will track clicks and views on a different ad. Get that ad in there as soon as possible so you can start collecting as much data as possible. 
And now that we've recreated the section, I can just delete the one we made before. And we're gonna remove any unnecessary space, which again is really no harm on WordPress. Don't get intimidated by the don't edit these files warnings because you bought the theme or in any case, it's your own theme and you can chop it up. How else are you gonna learn? And update the file. And now let's go ahead and refresh and we can see things hopefully still look good. We can see in some cases, the ad unit will not fill up the whole space, but on our blog posts, we've set it up so it does. So don't worry too much. The idea now is just to get the ad on your site and start collecting some page views, impressions, and clicks. And as you progress more through CSS and HTML, you'll learn how to get all the borders and sizes perfect. I'm also here for you in the comments on that topic. Now that you've learned the hard way on how to install an advertisement onto your WordPress website header, the easy way would just be if we were on our website course, training site dearblogger.com, for example, and you had this little space made with Elementor. If you make an entire page with the Elementor canvas and the full width setting using themes like Astra and the Elementor page builder, you can set up your own little column right in the row here. You can pop a text editor in and then you can go ahead and hopefully copy some AdSense script and have your ad show itself over here. Just make sure you're in the text editor and paste everything in. Now the reason I don't go to this method first, just pasting the ad code into an Elementor column, is because Elementor has a habit of displaying text in ways that you might not want if you're just using a WordPress visual editor. Sometimes Elementor can confuse things or can block ad code. So if we went ahead and updated this, it just might not show up as we hope right away. Of course that would be tough if we had an ad blocker on. So let's go ahead and pause it always, get a crazy error. And yeah, it just might take a little bit more time on Elementor to have things show up because we're displaying the ad through Elementor as opposed to just through the normal WordPress.org appearance editor. I would be curious if you've had success displaying ads on Elementor though and installing ads using Elementor plugin. So let me know if the ads show up fine for you. In any case, guys, you now know how to get that header ad in. It really boils down to just hacking up your theme editor files and finding what code displays your logo, floating that to the left, and then floating your ad to the right. And hopefully you don't need that navigation menu off in the right floated area because that can go below the logo or above the logo just fine. You know, if it helps you too to distinguish the floated areas, you can also write in borders using a little bit more of your CSS knowledge. For example, you could do like a border of two pixels dashed gray color on the left side. And that way you can see exactly how much space it's taken up. Refresh our site. And there we have a little border. So we can see it's really just 400 pixels over here. The numbers don't lie, that's just 400. And there's a margin on the right. If there were a padding on the right, then you could push things out within that space. And the dotted lines would help you tell what's included in there. So that could be a helpful way of being the architect here and constructing the different portions that you're floating, especially if you wanted to float three different things in your header and be ambitious, like a logo, then a menu, and then the ad, for example, or a logo, an ad, and a button, a logo, a button, and a menu, a logo, and two buttons, whatever. Of course, the widths that you're gonna use will change. I've just found that anywhere between 850 and 900 is a good starting point for a WordPress header. And that using the float left here is good for the logo and the float right is good for the ad. If you wanted to float left two things, you can do that, just put one right after the other. And make sure as you're adding up your sections that the 400 and the 400 don't go more than the total width or whatever numbers you're using. And by the way, this strategy will be really useful if you ever wanna just custom float a few objects in the middle of a WordPress page or a blog post because you can write this exact same code into the WordPress visual editor.